Hallelujah. 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 Oh, if I was you, I'd get those antenna up. <laughs> There's a supernatural moving of the Spirit of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you for the energy of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Brother Bender touched on it. You may be seated. I, I want us, first of all, I, I want somebody to look um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I, I, maybe I'll turn over there with you. I don't, I don't know, should I, I don't know if I should or not, but I, I will. 1 Corinthians 14. Thank you, Jesus. Are you there? When you're there, shout, I'm there. It's on page 200. Are you with me? All right, now let's, let's just read through this right here. Let's not hurry, but let's, let's get through this right here because God is about to do a very supernatural thing for you. I don't want to disturb the Holy Spirit because he, he, he really, and I know a lot of times we say that, he really has something very significant to do for you tonight. Oh, that ought to at least just make you smile once. It's God, God has something significant to do for you tonight. Something beyond the surface. Just, just go like that. Just, just, no, it's below. The, no, we're going to have to dig just a little bit for it, but it's in there and, and it's gold. <laughs> Everything that glitters is not gold, but this is gold. Just, just you could be a gold digger tonight. We're gonna just dig around in here, root around a little bit, and come up with some gold, and it's going to be significant in your life. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? So then you're not gonna be distracted, are you, by mints and chewing gum, and you're gonna lock in here and and dig with me. We, can. Do I don't have to entertain you, do I? Can we dig in here and see if we can find this thing right here? Can we do that? Can we do that? Come on, touch somebody say, come on, dig with me. Come on, touch them, say, come on, dig with me. Dig with me. You look like you can use some gold. You need, you need a little bit of gold. You need, you need a healing that's all gold. You, yes, you do. You need, you, yeah, you need victory that's all gold. You need, to, you need to leave this place tonight, and when you walk back out there in the parking lot and start to sit down in your car, you need to feel different than when you opened the door and came in here. That's what needs to happen. God needs to do something significant for you tonight. You, you've got to come in here hungry and thirsting, thirsting after living water. Just, just say, I got to have a drink. I, I'm thirsty. I'm parched. I, and the reason I am is because I done gave out everything I had. I came in here, Jesus, with nothing left. I come in here, if I don't get a word tonight, I ain't even going back to my car. I'm just going to throw myself over the altar, and I'm going to lay there till I get some gold out of your word tonight. If I have to read from Job to Malachi, I'm going to get me some gold before I leave this building tonight. I'm not around ready to be religious. I'm not going through the motions. I'm not wasting my time coming in here on Sunday night and leave here without no gold. I'm going to get me some gold before I leave there. There's something I'm going to know that I don't know now before I leave this place. There's a healing going to take place in my body that I don't have now before I leave this place. I, I'm going to get some kind of a revelation that's going to push me through every line of Satan's defense next week, but I'm not going to sit in here and just be entertained. I dare you to shout, feed me. Now sit down. Now let's dig a little bit. You ready? Everybody got your Bible? All right, let's dig a little bit. Page 200. 1 Corinthians 
chapter 14, verse 1. Follow after love and desire. Uh, right there in your Bible, go ahead and write. Earnestly desire and zealously, Z-E-A-L-O-U-S-L-Y, zealously cultivate mm, spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. See, that means you've got to put some effort into it. You've got to dig in here a little bit. Follow after and earnestly desire and zealously cultivate spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, what? Speaketh not unto men. Touch somebody and say, I'm not talking to you. Because you can't help me no way. <laughs> He that prayeth and speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but watch this, unto God. Now, now in a minute, if I get there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to point out to you, although I shouldn't do it tonight, but I will, I will point out to you hmm, your greatest opportunity. I, I shouldn't, but, but I'm just feeling so good that I may point out to you your greatest opportunity. Your greatest opportunity for what? To get the right mate so that you don't have to go through a divorce three years from now because you're about to marry the wrong person. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Your greatest opportunity because you're getting ready to leave the job that God has you on, but you feel like you're in prison. Yeah, but God's about to promote you to Potiphar's house, and you're going to walk out of prison and go get in worse shape than you're in right now because you're about to miss God. I, I just got to tell you, God wants to give you an opportunity. No, oh, here's what he wants to do. He wants to spare you the pain. Oh, God, here's, here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you not getting that phone call that your child just got hit in the middle of the city street on their bicycle and they've got a brain injury and they're laying at the hospital just barely holding on to life. I'm talking about an opportunity. I'm talking about God sparing you the pain. Now, I can't go too far down that line because I got I to get to it later. But I, I, just, I just have been quick by the Holy Ghost. See, there's something in your future No, you, you can't see it right now. If you could see it right now, you'd be screaming like a crazy man. If you could see it. It's waiting. Hmm? Your son coming home telling you that he's got a 14-year-old girl pregnant. It's in your future. That checkup you're waiting to get that you don't even know that the cancer has already invaded your body. Oh, it's real quiet. Why is it so quiet? Why, why is it so quiet? Here's what I got to tell you. There's some stuff in your future right now. Huh? Yeah, there's a mess. Your husband coming home telling you he's fallen for the secretary down at the shop. It's in your future. And you say, but why, 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 why? Won't God do something about it? He did. He did. But you've ignored it. God wants to give you an opportunity to avoid the pain. Just touch somebody and say, you can miss it. <laughs> you can miss the pain. <laughs> oh, God. I said, you can pass through it. 
I said you can pass through it. Yeah. Now, it's one thing to be thrown in the water and the water not overflow you. It's another thing that you didn't have to get thrown in the water. It's one thing to pass through the fire and the fire not burn you. But it's a whole other thing that you didn't have to get thrown in the fire. Can you understand that it's one thing to get a healing, but it's another thing for you to have the opportunity to avoid the sickness altogether. Just touch somebody and say, there's some junk out there. There's some mess out there. There's some tragedy out there. There's some trial out there. There's some trouble out there. But thanks be to God tonight, God is going to give us an opportunity, watch me, to miss the mess. Does anybody want to miss the mess? See, see, see. It's, it's amazing to me. The thing about the mountaintop is when you're there, you feel like you're always going to be there. And it's the same thing about the valley. When you're there, you feel like you're always going to be there. And some of you must be on the mountaintop right now because I can't even get you convinced that there's anything in your future that you need the opportunity to avoid. That's what I'm trying to tell you. you just sitting there looking at me like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. My God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God, oh my God. Don't you understand, there's some stuff right now, if God would show you your future, you would scream like a madman and go to rooting in the carpet wanting to die. Uh, let me just slip this in parenthetically. <laughs> Some of you have already caught a glimpse of it. Now, let me just ask you the question. Is there any stuff that you've been through that you'd like to avoid? That's what I'm talking about. Well, God wants to give you an opportunity to miss the mess. <laughs> I'm feeling Holy Ghost up in here right now. I'm going to tell you something. God wants you to give, give you an opportunity to miss the mess. See, you, I don't know. I'll tell you in your future, there may be a car wreck, and they're going to rush you to the hospital and have to give you a blood transfusion, but they didn't get that blood screen just right, and the blood transfusion they give you is going to have HIV virus in it. But I'm here to tell you tonight, you can miss the mess. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! I said, hallelujah. And some of you have already had a glimpse of the mess. Some of you have already seen some growing up on the horizon out there. And right now, fear is about to grip your heart. But I've got good gospel news for you. God is about to anoint you with a revelation that will give you the opportunity to miss the mess. Just touch somebody and say, I'd appreciate it if I could miss the mess. <laughs> It'd just be all right if I could miss that next migraine. That, that would be all right with me. It, it would be nice if I could miss that bankruptcy trial that's out there in my future. I'd sure like to avert that if I could. I'd sure like to avert my 12-year-old ending up being 17 and strung out on crack. I'd like to be able to avert that thing. I'd like to be, I'd just like, excuse me, I'd like to miss that mess. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read this whole thing. Jump over right quick. Right quick while I'm under this anointing, jump over to verse uh, verse 13. Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray also that he may interpret. Verse 14, that's where I'm going. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit ah, pray. 
The spirit of a man shall sustain all his infirmity. There is a spirit in man, Job said, the breath of Almighty that gives him understanding. Do you know that you can get a spiritual revelation that your spirit is operating in in your prayer life that has not yet caught up to your intellect? Do you understand that it bypasses the level of mental reasoning? It bypasses the level of conscious reasoning and it gets down into your spirit and your spirit begins to pray things that your mind doesn't know anything about. Don't you understand that the Holy Spirit can go where you cannot go, see what you cannot see, hear what you cannot hear, and then come back and tell you what you could not know in your spirit so that your spirit will then pray into your future and allow you to avert the tragedy and miss the mess. Come out here. Come out here. Stand right here. Stand right here. Now, a while ago in this service, uh, I walked up to you. I don't know, I don't know anything about you. I, 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 but when I walked past you, the Holy Ghost said, there's something wrong in her kidneys. Now, how did I know that? You say, but she ain't been to the doctor. That don't matter. My spirit, I didn't think about this till just now, went into her future. Isn't that what Gehazi said? What was that, Elijah's servant? Was it Elijah's servant, Gehazi? Is that right, Sister Pack? Is that right? Gehazi, it, it was, was Elijah's servant, and, and he, he sent him out, and the servant came back, and he tried to say something different than what really went on, and, and, and didn't, and didn't, and let me ask you a question, did, hey, didn't the man of God's spirit say, no, that's not what went on, and he said, well, yeah, that's what went on, and, and Elijah said back to Gehazi, I said, hey, 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 did my spirit go with you? So, so see, there was a mess in her future that the Holy Spirit went into her future. What? Through a gift of the Spirit. I said through a gift of the Spirit. Through a gift of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand that praying in an unknown tongue is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's not just jabberwocky going on because you got emotional. It is your spirit praying. All right, go, go sit down. I don't mean to do this. Somebody get me something to wipe my face with, would you? Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, just touch somebody and say, go ahead and miss a mess. Just pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Go oh, see. Go ahead and miss the mess. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost and your daughter won't end up pregnant. Go ahead. Miss the mess. Go ahead. Go ahead. And your doctor's report will come back normal. Go ahead and miss the mess right now. Get your spirit out there into your future. Get out there and let the Holy Ghost grab a hold of the buyer for your house. Now, now watch this here in 1 Corinthians 14. My spirit prayeth. Your spirit is the only part of you that came directly from God. Your spirit, watch, watch, is the breath of God himself. Watch this. Do you know that all seven of the nine gifts of the spirit, that seven of the nine gifts of the spirit were in operation before the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus? Let's look at them. Was the gift of prophecy in operation? Yes. Was the gift of the working of miracles in operation? Yes. Was the gift of discerning of spirits in operation? Yes, yeah, in the Old Covenant. 
What else we got? The gifts of healing. Were, were they in operation in the, in the old covenant? Yes or no? Yes. Uh, what else? Faith. The gift of faith. Was that in operation in the old covenant? Yes. What else? The word of wisdom. Was that in operation in the old covenant? Yes. What about the word of knowledge? Was that in operation in the old covenant? Yes. Is that seven of them? Is that seven? So the only two that were not in operation in the old covenant, they are tongues and interpretation of tongues. Jesus had to die and resurrect from the dead to give you that gift. And you've got it and you take it lightly. You think it's just something to show off in church. Your spirit. Hey! Excuse me while I get blessed. Why? He's jumping up around. He's jumping up and down in there. I feel my baby's jumping. Blessed be the name of God. I feel that thing moving around in there. I feel God moving. He's stretching his arms. He's bearing his arm and flexing his muscle. I, I feel him alive on the inside of me. And when I pray in the Holy Ghost, it is my spirit that prayeth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just walking you through this. Okay, now watch. What is it then? I will, shout the next word. Pray. You will what? Pray. Most of you just lied. What is it then? I will, Pray. I will, Pray. I will, Pray. what will you do? Pray. No, you won't, you complain. What should you do? Pray. No, you won't. You'll gossip. What will you do? Pray. No, you'll go tell your three best friends and spend an hour on the cell phone. What will you do? Pray. Well, I'll call for the elders of the church. No, what will you do? Pray. I will pray. That's it. We don't do what Jesus did because we don't do what Jesus did. He, he prayed, he won. In Gethsemane, he fought hell and he won. Greatest sin in the New Testament church is not adultery. The greatest sin in the New Testament, and I said sin, S I N. Now that word ought to frighten you. We've had so much greasy grace and loosey goosey gospel that we don't, even, we don't even tremble when we say the word sin. Sin means you can miss heaven. Sleeping with your girlfriend outside the bonds of holy matrimony will send your soul to hell. Cheating, lying, stealing, fornication, lust, envy, strife, reveling, sedition, heresy. Come on now. Sin. S-I-N. Sin. See, that ought to make you tremble. That you should fall into the hands of an angry God. Having trampled under your feet the blood of his son, having spurned his wooing, drawing Holy Spirit, 
having rejected the price of the payment of his blood. We need some more preaching like sinners in the hands of an angry God. Grace and mercy are preaching in the pulpits today, but just off stage, judgment is waiting. Sin. Sin, it ought to frighten us. It, mean, it means that we could miss heaven. Miss heaven so you can keep your temper intact. Miss heaven for 20 minutes. Well, some of you think you're more man than you are. 15 minutes. Pleasure. Miss heaven. Fall hopelessly and helplessly into the hands of a God who with one word out of his mouth sent lice upon the nation of Egypt. And every cow and all the livestock died. Falling into the hands of an angry God. Now it's one thing. You come up and punch me, I might not like it. But I might have the grace to turn the other cheek. But you come and punch my baby girl sitting on that front row tonight, and you've fallen into the hands of an angry preacher. You understand me? And that's what we do. We shun his name and spurn his wooing. But the greatest sin in the modern church is not adultery, it's not pornography, it's not fornication, it's not lying or cheating. Let me tell you what it is. It is prayerlessness. Oh, I didn't think that'd get a whole lot of shouts. Some of you look down your nose when you find out somebody told a lie and you'll pass judgment you haven't prayed in the last six weeks. I'm not talking about going through your confession list. I'm talking about praying. I, I can't go here. I, I can't go here, but let me just... Let me just hit it and run. First Samuel declares, God forbid that I should sin. There's that word. It ought to strike terror in the heart of every believer. That I should sin by failing to pray for you. Oh my God, now I've taken it a step further. What have I done? What senseless tragedies have I occurred because I did not pray? But I look at you and I say, what has been visited upon me that your prayer could have averted? If I fell into sin, would you be guilty? Some of you staff will take my paycheck and refuse to pray. What have you encountered that my prayer could have stopped? What, what did you have to go through that my prayer could have saved? I 
I see that precious woman. She comes to every miracle healing and victory service. She was here at all of Ken meeting with that precious girl that can control herself and from Canada and I weep. What would happen if we really prayed? Can I give you a preview? Let me give you a preview. Say this with me. I will pray with my spirit and with my understanding also. Okay, turn this air conditioner off, please. Please, thank you. I want to be able to talk tomorrow. Are you bored? Do you want to go home? I See, we know a lot of stuff that we, that we prayed, watch, and we got out of. But how much of it should we never have had to go through? What tragedies have been visited upon us that we could have averted? How many messes that we could have missed if we just prayed? Some of you wouldn't hear somebody say, damn, if your life depended on it. But you haven't prayed this week. It's 841. Thank you. I'm just so anointed right now, I hate to move. What have your children gone through? Because you didn't pray. What door has been opened that your prayer could have shut and locked? I'm talking to you about an opportunity. <laughs> see, see, but you're real quiet. Don't, don't think about what's happened before tonight. Think about what can happen after tonight. When you find your prayer closet again, when you get up 30 minutes early and start praying in the Holy Ghost, when you, when you begin to grab hold of the horns of the altar and refuse to let go. We want an easy formula and there is none. If Jesus had to pray. The Father said to the Son, go, shed your blood, die resurrect from the dead and I still will not give you the heathen. You want to rescue perishing humanity? The father said to his son, yes, you'll have to do this. But your Bible said, these things ought you have, to, ought you have done and not to leave the other undone. It wasn't enough to die on the cross. Can you imagine? It wasn't enough to be whipped with a cat of nine tails until his flesh hang around his legs like ribbons. It wasn't enough. The father said, you can do all that and I still won't give you the heathen. What does the scripture say? Pray and I'll give you the heathen for an inheritance. It's not enough to die and resurrect from the dead. Not even enough to go back to heaven. Jesus had to pray. I will pray the Father and he will send you. In the garden, it's Jesus under the full light of a Passover moon praying until his sweat became blood. the incarnate Son of the living God on this earth planet had to pray.
how much more must we pray without ceasing? This is not an option. This is a command. Pray ye. Not if you pray, when you pray. Did you catch it? Not if you pray, when you pray. Pray ye one for another that you may be healed. Pray without ceasing. Pray. Pray. I challenge you, pray. I encourage you, pray. I rebuke you, pray. Stir you, pray. Pray and watch the heavens open. Pray and watch seas be parted. Pray. And watch lepers be cleansed. Pray and watch the altars fill. Pray and watch financial blessing break out upon your life. Pray. Pray. What an opportunity to reverse hell's plan Aye. for your life. Pray. I don't know how to do my job. I'm about to lose my job. Pray. My children are in rebellion. Pray. My body is sick. Pray. Hell trembles and God bears his arm to the man who will bend his knee. Pray. You don't have an anointing, pray. You don't have any revelation, pray. You don't have any victory, pray. You're mean and grouchy and ugly, pray. Your marriage is falling apart, pray. Your elbow hurts, pray. Your eyes are going bad, pray. Your neighborhood's going to hell, pray. Your husband is lost, pray. And miss the mess. Lift your hands right now and thank him for all the mess you missed. And repent of the sin of prayerlessness. Oh God, that prayer is not a prayer is not a burden. It's an opportunity. Let me ask you a question. How come the devil never fights little league? Never fights the potluck dinner. He don't even fight most church services much. But call a prayer meeting. Right. You can have 7,000 people in this building on Sunday morning, but call a prayer meeting for 5 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Cars break down. Tires go flat. Alarm clocks don't work anything because hell knows what would happen if you would pray. I'm facing the greatest struggle of my life. Set your alarm clock for 3 a.m. Hey, get up, walk the floor, pray. And when the devil says you're crazy, what are you doing? Just look on your shoulder and say, I'm just missing the mess. I'm just missing the mess, that's all I'm doing. I'm missing the mess, that's what I'm doing. I'm missing the mess. 
All right. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, 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 hey. Is this worth just five minutes? Is this worth five minutes? See, isn't it amazing? See, see, hell will fight this right here. I could, I could be preaching, and I'm telling you, you'd be shouting and running and screaming and dancing. And, oh, you. This, this is what hell fights. Because hell knows that the hand of God moves for a man who prays. Acts chapter 12. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain, underline the word certain, of the church. Notice he did not stretch forth his hand to touch the entire church. There, are always a rem there is always a remnant inside the church that are attractive to the onslaught of hell. Certain Christians, just certain ones, not everybody in the crowd, just somebody, some prayer warrior. He'll let you sing like a bird, but pray and hell will come against you. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex. Shout it. Certain. How many? Certain. Everybody? No. The deacon boy. No. Certain of the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. Because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but, please, shout the next word. But they had a praise and worship service. But they had a camp meeting. But, an evangelist went to the jail and prayed for him. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping kills me. Man of God is sleeping. He's in prison, surrounded with four quaternions of soldiers. In fact, the Bible bears out that he was in the inner prison. If I had time to preach this to you, I'd show you four gates of deliverance that God brought Peter back through. Deep in the inner prison. Four gates. They're all right there in your Bible in that passage. See if you can find them when you go home. When he brought him back. It doesn't say anything about him going in through them, but it tells you when he came back out. Peter is in the inner prison. Four gates. Four quaternions of soldiers, and he's asleep. <laughs> he's not tossing and turning, wondering how the church mortgage is going to get paid. He's asleep. Oh, he's not wondering how the staff's going to get paid next week. He's asleep. He's not wringing his hands it's because his wife is sick. And his son is tormented. 
He's asleep. Because the church is praying. Are you trying to at least look in the eyes of a whole lot of people that are in leadership, people that get paychecks, people that are on the platform, people that have called themselves intercessors. Just wondering. Just wondering if I can just go home tonight, go to sleep. Just wondering if I can just go to sleep. may have to finish this. <laughs> Behold the angel of the Lord. He was sleeping, what, sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. See, you can't keep a believer in chains when the church prays. The angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side. Had to send an angel, shake the man, and wake him up. I want me some of that. Don't you? I want me some of that. Don't you? I want God to have to send an angel to shake me. Instead of the cares of life keeping me up all night. Get up. What do I need to get up for? Hell, well, they're over there. They're hungry again. Got to go feed them. All right, I'll go feed them. I'll feed them. You keep them praying. <laughs> the angel said, Arise, up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Put your clothes on. Get your sandals on your feet. So he did. Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wist not what it was, that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and the second ward or gate. They came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. Think of that. You know what? Look up here at me. I shouldn't be doing this right now. I know you're tired. You want to go home. I shouldn't be giving you these little nuggets right now, but I just can't stop. See, see the thing is, do you know when this city will of its own accord open up to us? You know when they'll start lining up on Sunday night and knock you out of the way to try to get a seat? When you pray. That's all. And the thing is, they'll be your family. Yeah. So, uh, according went out 
departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. See, when people pray, you get delivered from the expectation of people. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, John Mark, where many were gathered together. Mm. Watching a movie. Playing pool. Mm. Playing those TV games, whatever those things are called. You now praying. They were, they were praying. They were praying. And I don't know, Brother Rod, it just doesn't seem like we have much fellowship in this church. I mean, I haven't seen a men's meeting, a ladies' meeting, a meeting meeting, a adult meeting, a children of adults meeting. We just don't know. Why don't we have to? Why don't you pray? Pray. Grow up. Stop having to be ministered to and become a minister. Grow up. Pray. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. They were praying. Peter knocked at the door of the gate, and a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate, for gladness. <laughs> couldn't get in. Got out, but couldn't get in. <laughs> but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Watch this. You don't even have to be a superman of faith. They were praying and were astonished when God sent the answer. How much more you that have been trained in faith that refuses to take no for an answer. What astounding things may you be spared if you just learn to pray. What's your wife gone through that you could have stopped? Stand up. Stand up. Put your Bible down. Put your Bible down. Put your Bible down. Stomp your foot. Stomp your foot. Do it one more time and say, that's it. I'm about to miss the mess. Stomp your foot. Say, that's it. Now turn all the way around. I will never build, be guilty of the sin of prayerlessness again. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. We're going to pray. I'm so excited about what God's about to do. I can't even, I can't even begin. I've been carrying this thing now. I've been carrying this thing now that I, I let you know I was at least pregnant with tonight. I've been carrying this since the Friday night of, the last Friday night of camp meeting. God gave me this entire vision. 
He's given me so much revelation on prayer. I can't even assimilate it all. I can't even, I can't even get it all put together. If you'd walk in my house, things are piled everywhere. If you walk in my study, things are piled everywhere. Every time I see the secretaries, here's 10 more pages of notes. Type these up. It just, it's just rolling in me like a river. We might be the first church in history to find out what God would really do if we would pray. We really might be. I don't know, because I don't know how you're going to respond. I tell you, my heart, my heart is to see God answer your prayers. Lift up your hands and begin to praise God for answering that prayer. That prayer, that specific, oh God, I feel it right now. There it is. I feel it right now. I wish you'd get some joy about you. I don't know what we're in a funeral for. I, I wish you'd get some joy about you. God has given us an opportunity tonight as I pray for you and as you pray for me. We're going to miss the mess. Yeah, yeah, just begin to say, I'm going to miss the mess. I'm going to miss the mess. I'm going to miss the mess. I'm going to miss the mess.